Starbase, 1552 Comics. We sell everything a collector would want. Comics, Funkos, action figures, and so many more. A real American comic book shop. We are online only. Starbase, 1552 Comics. Find us on eBay Auctions. For Murph's magical creations. 
home to custom laser engraving and gifts. This veteran-owned and operated company engraves for all occasions. If you want one of Murph's magical creations, call the number on your screen or commission through either Instagram or via email. Murph's Magical Creations, made with love for you. Flying high, you know how I feel. Sun in the sky, you know how I feel. Breeze drifting on by, you know how I feel. It's a new dawn. It's a new day, it's a new life oh. I'm feeling Folks, we are here in the corn fields of Iowa here for the second race in the Cruising Classics Next Gen Series. Folks, good evening, folks. I am the redneck announcer, Jake Reeves. Got the Australian up here, Dean Biggles, or Hopton, however you want to look at it. Hopton Biggles, Dean, we may end up having to talk about this one here in a second, try to get all that end up lined up here in just a little bit. But there you see the grid on your screen. Sorry, we are just a tick late, but... There you see the grid. We'll run it down through there. We'll get to a little bit of uh, track facts, I guess you could say, about this place here in just a little bit. But, folks, it's going to be an absolute blast to see who's going to be able to make it into the next round here tonight. Obviously, it is a cutoff race. Actually, they are going to give us one lap, so it is a short track. So, completely threw me off there for a minute. But, Dean... Out here with Iowa, you know, with the cornfields and everything, have you been able to go over and get you some corn out there in the cornfields? No, I would love to get some corn out there in the cornfields, my friend, but unfortunately not. Welcome everybody in the chat as well, too. We are writing a little daylight dollar short on this one. Um, because, yeah, so, but don't you worry about that, gentlemen. We are going to get uh, motor racing on the short track as well, too. It's going to go past Philly. I don't even see the uh, pace car lights on at the moment, so welcome, welcome, welcome. We will get uh, rolling on this one, Jacob. Uh, so, Jeremy, uh, really quickly, if you want to go through that grid order for everybody, just for the top 10 at least for now, because, you know, it's going to change anyway. We have 115 big ones, 116 left, really. 
Yeah, we'll get it right here. Jeremy Gardner, um, he is on the pole with Patrick Travick, Jamie Barkus, Brandon Evans, Jason Taylor, Steve Tucker, Robert Barber, Jake Ellenson, Ryan Pendleton, and Brandon Barrier. That is the top ten. Pace car finally starting to pull off of the racetrack. Barney the Flagman holding on to that green flag, and we are ready to rock and roll here for the last race in the very first round of the Cruising Classics Next Gen Series playoffs. And how about old Jeremy Gardner, folks? Anybody within Goat Locker, they know this man right here. He's been up front. He knows how to get it done here in these next-gen cars or even in a truck back when it was the Jam Printing and Promotions Truck Series back when he won the championship on the Thursday night series when it was the trucks. So Jeremy Gardner, no stranger here with Goat Locker, getting up here and getting the lead very, very early on with Patrick Dravick and now his new teammate, his new teammate with Premier Racing Setups. Brandon Evans sit back there in third. And you know for those premier racing setups, they get your car going a little bit more faster than ever. We'll see it that at the moment. Steve Tucker, of course, on the 24 machine, the Toyota. Oh, and that's uh, Jamie at the moment, at the camera on. That's Jamie on the inside apron. Now, should I be okay to get himself back onto the track there, Jacob? But he will drop like a stone. Maybe just get Dougie. My, uh, Dougie's actually I just had a little bit of a mistake there as well, too. So he's basically almost followed him. But that's a situation. No caution on... Uh, on the moment on the raceway, but a battle currently in the moment between P1 and P2. That's Patrick and Brennan Evans. Yeah, absolutely. PRS trying to go 1-2 right here. Jeremy Gardner, a new addition to the PRS stable, uh, that being Premier Racing Setups. We'll talk about them here later on in the broadcast, but there you see Evans able to slide by Jeremy Gardner. Brennan Evans, he actually just got through running a C-Fix race. Um, just a couple of... Um, I mean, really, I mean, just a couple of minutes ago, he actually jumped in here at the last minute. So, hell of a deal right there to be able to go from a C-Fix truck and then jump straight into a next-gen car. Uh, that's just the talent that we've been able to see Brandon Evans have so far this season. As you look back here, a little bit of battling going on back here. That's Robert Barber. Barber, he's trying to see if he can get him a couple more spots. Already up one. Started seven. He's up to six. Jake Ellingson up here, as you see right in front of him. Steve Tucker, both of these guys, they have actually had a little bit of beef throughout this season. Dean, if you do remember, uh, back, of, I believe it may have been, I'm trying to remember when it was, I believe it was Pocono when both of these guys ended up having that little bit of beef that was going on. Uh, so there is no love lost between Jake Ellison and obviously Steve Tucker, but everything oh. looking so clean so far, but we'll see what happens as Barber actually slides up and he gets into the fence. Yep going straight into that fence at the moment. It's not shaking in bacon. I was just watching. Oh, oh yes. and he's going to get into it. Formosa. <laughs> yeah. Formosa. Came up skiding around a million miles an hour, didn't he? I don't know why. He was kind of sticking to his racing line there. But uh, there's no shaking in bacon between those two drivers at the moment. Sorry, I just watched Talladega Nights last night because I was talking to another co commentator uh, that had never seen it before in his life. And I'm like, are you kidding me? You've got to see that one, especially you, Jacob. You love Talladega. But uh, we're not in Talladega, yeah. my friend. We're in Iowa. Yeah, we absolutely love the Talladega Nights. We love the Days of Thunder. We love uh, even the new NASCAR Netflix series that we oh, was yeah. talking about. Absolutely love that one. But I think what happened right there was I think Barber may have got up there on the top side. That's where it ends up getting a little bit rough up there. The cars, these next-gen cars, not real keen to a lot of bumps. Uh, you know, as there you see right there riding on board with Barrier. Barrier trying to hold on to it for every little bit that he can. Formosa, now he's up there trying to get around Barber, but up there in turn one and two, folks, it gets oh. very bumpy. It's Barber, Robert Barber in the 57. Hell of a save, be able to keep it straight. No caution on the speedway as of yet. But that's when Barber got up there on the top. It wasn't the marbles or anything like that. It's just, it's so bumpy up there on the top side in one and two. That is very, very treacherous ground in these next, er, in these next gen cars, rather. Uh, that's where, you know, all hell ends up breaking loose. Guys end up losing the back end. They start spinning around. So, but but still a good drive for Barber, but the only thing is he had to use a crutch, and that crutch being Scott Formosa to keep him straight. But everybody's slipping, sliding all around. Check out Bobby Jermaine. Jermaine up here, he's trying to get him another spot. Looks like he's going to be able to get it at the hands of Brandon Barrier. Barrier, now he's trying to follow George Jewell. Shout out to Shasta out there. And also Ray Ellenson out there. Know that they're cheering on 
uh, their family members out here on the track. But George Jewell, how about this? Started 14th. He's up to ninth. Scott Formosa started 12th. He's up to eighth. And we see a little bit of three wide back here with Eric Martinez on the bottom trying to get around a new entry into the field. That playing Blake Edel back here in that 18. There you see him right there in front of Joe Hobbs. And I, or I believe that is actually Barkus, excuse me. So that's J.B. Barkus. So Barkus tried to see if he could find his way around him. But how about Barber? Barber, 7th to 16th. And Jamie Barkus, 3rd, all the way back to 14th. Yeah, it's slipping and sliding absolutely everywhere at the moment. We almost had four wide there, Jacob. Not recommended considering how bumpy and slidey this track currently at the moment is. I didn't realize it snows in this part of the neck of the woods, but it's obviously it seems to feel like it's having some snow on the track at the moment. Because drivers are definitely gambling, trying to keep this car on the track there. We've only 14 or so laps down, 102 to go, of course. We'll expect pit stops. We had have a little bit of a moment. Alan Marshall's gone in. Chris Sawyer's gone in. We know before that Dougie went in really early. So that's the situation at the moment. Doesn't look like Tyler Justice is, uh, at, at the moment, the 20th place driver. But look at the gaggle of cars here. That's an absolute, all different paces, all struggling with grip, all, all over the place there, Jacob. But still putting in one direction, touch wood. Up further up the road there, big gap, Jeremy Gardner, Brandon Evans, and Patrick Jebeck is all up the road there. And then Steve Tucker, Ryan, and Jake are relatively in the closest battle for four, five, and six. Yeah, that's pretty much what you're getting right there. Everybody's really kind of starting to spread out. You see this battling back here. There you see Joel and Jermaine. Jermaine trying to see if he can get him another spot, find his way around Mr. George Joel. And folks, uh, we was a little bit late coming in, but want to kind of give everybody kind of an idea of what's going to be up right here. 115 laps. They're on a full tank of fuel, so it's going to be basically give or take 100 laps. But with the tire wear and everything, that's going to be crazy. Uh, they will actually be able to make it on fuel from what I'm able to see right here. They're going to be able to make it on gas. It just comes down to the point of whether or not they're going to be able to make it on tires because this place right here, it is an absolute cheese grater on the tires, much like Dover, uh, much like, say, old Atlanta, if you will. Uh, just a lot of um, similarities and all of that good stuff uh, because that's what's going to make it interesting right here. They're, they're not racing for the fuel at this point, folks. I guarantee them to you that. They're racing for the tires to be able to try to manage as much as they possibly can. So you're going to start seeing these lap times drop in a hurry, uh, especially here with these next-gen cars there you see back there. You got Jason Taylor right here. He's going to see if he can take a shot at Jake Ellenson. Ellenson up here. We got a caution. Oh, caution. Caution on the speedway. I am looking. I believe I just found it right there. It is Eric Martinez. Yeah, and, and Brandon Barrier, I think, might have been involved here. Let's have a look at the replay. I think there's definitely maybe two cars involved here. Let's have a look. This is Brandon Barrier. Now, I'm not sure he was involved or he's had taken a reaction of... No, he's had a spin, and this has probably caused Ooh. the spin behind it. Let's have a look. Get off the racing line, my dear friend. No, that's separate. And then Martinez now. And he. this is the situation of Martinez. And I think there's another individual spin. Hit the bumps right there, Jacob. Yep. No, that's what's gone. And he's had to react to it. There it is. So it went on the inside apron. Very, very lucky not to collide. But that's our first caution on the speedway there, my friend. And uh, it's a little bit of a breather to find out what's been happening. Well, I mean, that's about a normal, um, I guess you could say it's normal, uh, however you really want to look at it. I mean, Martinez actually slamming on the brakes, uh, which is, I mean, that's exactly what he did. He locked the brakes up uh, to try to not get into Bear Spending now, had he just went ahead and gassed up, he probably would have been able to pass him on and not even worry about it. But at the same time, uh, him still driving it in there like that. I mean, obviously, folks look at it like this. You see a car wrecked in front of you, or in these parts up here in North Georgia, you see a deer out in front of you. We'll just go with it at this point. Uh, for some of you deer hunters, you may end up knowing what I'm talking about. The deer hunters would just go ahead, gas it up, and just run the damn deer over. But everybody else, if there was a car in front of them or a deer or something like that run out in front of them, what's your first instinct? It's to hit the brakes. That is exactly what Martinez did right there. Barrier spun. His first reaction was to hit the brakes. He locked the brakes up back end comes around it's normal it is what it is and i think that may have ended up happening what happened to barrier uh which got him spun around uh spinning around like a top but there you see before you 
the championship 12, I guess you could say, or the round of 12, not necessarily the championship, because obviously it'll be the championship four, but Evans, Tucker, Patrick Dravick, uh, Jamie Barkas, Mark McCreary, and McCreary, one driver that I am looking through the field, and I do not, not see him, yeah. that 83 of no. Mark McCreary out here on the track. Jake is here, George is here, Scott Formosa, Robert Barber, Bobby Germain, Joe Hobbs, and Alan Marshall. So the only one that's not here is Mark McCreary. And, um, you know, I've talked a lot of good things about him uh, or here with, um, with the Cruising Classes Next Gen Series, Dean. So uh, this is bad right here, especially this being a cutoff race, uh, because I do believe that they've got two races uh, per round all the way up to the championship four. That's correct, exactly. That's the second one at the moment. I was checking that with Patrick before that to make sure that we didn't have any uh, updates there on that fantastic graphic that they provide and that there isn't. Another fa fantastic thing we are, they are going to provide, of course, is you got to keep an eye out for this one. So this is breaking news, of course, and this is uh, so nasty. It's great food and fun with a cool name, of course. Is a goat locker racing is partnered with them. The restaurant and bar in Idaho will be fundraising on April the 22nd. 27th of course and run infinity cars at las vegas for 120 laps the race will be broadcasted by podium esports and we played live in the restaurant so the goal will be to raise two thousand five hundred dollars in order to provide sim racing rig to one of our nation's warriors and that fantastic isn't it so that's breaking and scan that if you have your phone at there at the moment there remember the 27th of this month so keep an eye out for that one did you get it broadcasted live on a, on a, on a uh in a, in a bar my friend in, in a restaurant and bar at Nasty, so that'd be cool. Uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, it yeah. absolutely would be. Honestly, I mean, you know, you end up getting guys in there uh, to be able to um, go in there, maybe get them something to eat, sit down with their families. Then you may end up just having maybe a couple of um, college frat parties, I guess, or frat <laughs> fraternities come in there, and they just want to hammer down a couple of cold ones, uh, beer, however you want to look at it, and then they go in there, and then they see I racing on TV. I mean, that's that's pretty crazy stuff, obviously. Um, you know, with the Nazar 360 Racing Network, we've done races, um, which was in front of um, a lot of comic book fans, and it was at Nashville Super Speedway, obviously, me, uh, Wesley Outland, both of us, was on the call for that one. Uh, it was a couple of seasons ago in the Triple M Pulling Truck Series, I believe is what it was, and we had an absolute blast on that one, so... Um, that's the crazy thing about this, Dane, especially, you know, with our racing, just our racing in general, just how much it's moving up, I guess you could say, in the world. Uh, I mean, sim racing is really starting to move up way, way higher than what either probably, or honestly, either one of us would have ever thought uh, here in recent years because it's just skyrocketing and uh, it's giving everybody an opportunity to try to be their favorite driver or be the best racer that they possibly can on a budget. We'll talk about that here in a minute. Is here we go. Green flag in the air. Jason Taylor did not make a pit stop. Scott no. Formosa, he's up here. Jeremy Gardner, Formosa, I don't believe he ended up making a pit stop. Oh. And Bobby Germain says the hell with it. I'm going to send it right in the middle. But he's going to end up going way back from where he started in the, or restarted in the fourth spot. He's got Tucker right up on the top side. But how about Taylor? Taylor, he's slipping back hard. Formosa slipping back hard. Gardner going back up to the lead. Evans trying to go for a second on Scott Formosa. Yeah, this is a this is what happens when you haven't taken tires. You said this track chews through the tires, and you can clearly see how much he's dropped. He's down. Jason started this. Remember this this green caution in P1. He's in P8. He's in massive, massive trouble at the moment. They're just trying to keep this car on the track. I don't know why he didn't go in the pit road. That was bold and brave. Maybe to save some tires towards the end of this race. We don't know. Jeremy Gardner's way up the road there. Just to touch back on that one, as you said, I had a lot of friends that don't actually follow any of iRacing and that sort of stuff that, you know, they don't really follow it. You know, they don't race it. Uh, not even television. When they watch it on the screens and our productions and stuff like that, we do. They go, holy, I thought we were watching a real race. That's how good it looks. And that's true. So, you know, you know that's what you said, going to a bar. You'd be surprised. People might be in there going, well, is this a real race or is this virtual? Yeah, I mean, that's, you know, that's one thing that my dad's told me. That's one thing that a lot of my buddies has told me is they're like, is this a real race? Well, yeah, more or less. I mean, it is a real race. I mean, 
You know, there's really people driving these cars. No, but is it real or is it a simulation? Hey, the way I look oh, at it, caution. you make your mind up on that. We'll talk about that here in a second. Caution. Now, big crash. Bobby Germain in the 42 ends up going around. Unfortunate to see Mr. Germain. It looks like he's going to end up parking it right there. I think that's by himself. Is it Ricky Bobby? Bobby Rick. No, Bobby. Oh, Bobby, yeah, wow. Yeah, Hard hit. And then, wow, Barrier ends up getting into it as well. Yep. Ouch. Wow. So cautions breed cautions, as they say, and they'll be down the pit road at the moment. So Bobby's going to have to fix the uh, repairs on that car. Chris is in the pit there, in the pit load fixing that one. Alan's in there, and Dougie's been there for a ton of time at the moment there, Ray. I'm not quite sure where Dougie's been in there, because Dougie hasn't got any damage. Dougie, we saw Dougie earlier. I didn't know if he's having some sort of problem or something like that, or Dougie's just happy to sit there and sign some autographs, maybe, to all the fans. Either way, he's sitting there for... A chunk of time, at least, majority of the race right now, but back to the leader. Another thing I wanted to mention to you as well, too there, Jacob, but there's also a car show coming up, my friend. And how check out this one, my friend. So events coming everywhere here at the Goat Locker Racing League. And that's Saturday the 22nd, between 10 a.m. and 2 p.m., of course, in Indianapolis, Indy, you know, my favorite track. And they've partnered with Lincoln Tech College Technology. So on the 22nd, at the Indianapolis campus in Lincoln, they'll be, they'll be hosting a car show to benefit Goat Locker Racing. So stay tuned as the partnership grows in the future. A car show. Wow. Wow. Isn't that pretty That spicy? is awesome to see that right yeah. there. I may end up having to get me a plane ticket and try to fly my happy tail right on up there You're on holidays, uh, to Jacob. Indianapolis. You? Do what? <laughs> You're going to be on holidays, aren't you, at that point? Maybe. I'm not quite sure. Uh, 22nd yeah, of June. Uh, yeah, maybe. Uh, we'll oh, see. June. Yeah, no, you June. Know what? Oh, we're in April. Yeah, sorry. May end up having to get with somebody on that one. May end up taking us a trip up north on that one. Um, that would be awesome to see right there. So, folks, if you're in that area, Indianapolis, Indiana, June 22nd, go up there and check out the car show right there. Obviously, a lot of things going on with Goat Locker, a lot of things going on with the Nazareth 360 racing network also a lot of things going on with the redneck announcer don't forget to go over to spotify check it out uh the door banging download podcast i will be having that recorded uh later tomorrow night and i'll have that out for you very very early on friday morning or late thursday night whichever one comes first um which odds are thursday night will come before friday morning obviously but Depends on how the timing ends up going. And also, if you have not checked it out yet, go over to the Hot Lap Podcast uh, with Brady LaBeouf, Tyler Dittmer. They talk about everything going on within Nazareth. Uh, obviously, a new sponsor um, that will show the schedule here just a little bit, but obviously a new sponsor uh, with the x Fandy Series that they're going to have on Tuesdays. Yes. Um, obviously, DSR Electric Truck Series, obviously on Mondays that I run in. And then also on Fridays, the concerns of police survivors truck series. There you see the schedule. Obviously, we've already ran Michigan for the Buck Kicker 200. And uh, if you want to hear my comments on how that race oh, ended, yeah, then that was, you know exactly uh, where I'm going there. with some of this right here. Yes, yeah, you saw it. Beef. So if you want to hear some comments, obviously there was a little bit of beef in it. Uh, but if you want to hear the comments, new episode will probably be coming out later on tomorrow night. Like I said, it's on Spotify. And then obviously... Brady and Tyler, they'll have their deal on the Hot Lap podcast as well. And then there you see Goat Locker Wednesday, Thursday, tomorrow night. They're going to be up there in Kentucky, up there the Bluegrass State. Obviously up there, I'm going to have to see if I can uh, get with old Jim Beam up there and see if I can uh, <laughs> see if I can get up there and get with the barrels, I guess you could say. I got a little bit up there um, in the woods, I guess you could say. And then there you see Twin Ring Motegi gonna be in japan or chat yeah japan really? yeah it? that's right yeah ja track yes. in japan wow yes Didn't even know that. yes huh i'm excited so that's where they'll be for the friday night series for the concerns of police survivors truck series goat lockers at eight cops is at nine so Jake, now see, jacob I want, I want to tell Go you ahead. this right are you are you going to because i would love this to, for jacob to do a live podcast are you going to talladega this year for the nascar series I unfortunately am not oh. uh, for the spring. Uh, what about the Atlanta? Funding the just did not close to you. Well, I mean, we've already went to the. Oh. Um, me and my wife, we went. Well, we didn't get to go to the Sunday race where they ended up having the photo finish, but we did get to go to the Saturday night uh, doubleheader where they had the trucks and they had the Xfinity. 
Um, and I kind of got kicked in the tail for that one because my wife kind of got a little bit ticked off at me because she wished we could have went to the Cup Series because oh, it was a lot better. But <laughs> anyway, you live, you learn, and uh, the missus is you always the right. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> Absolutely. Go. Absolutely. Ray and Chaz are the uh, agreeing the at that one. The missus is always right. But that's okay. Maybe for another a future event there, Jacob, because I'd like to hear yeah. that, like you live at Talladega doing a podcast live or even just a live event uh, commentating it live why not from the grandstands guess what you have to commentate this one live because about to go green, green flag, green here we flag. go on the front row prs up there gardner and evans gardner he's gonna get a fantastic jump how about ryan pendleton ryan has been on a straight up tear as of late here with goat locker he has now jumped up here started ninth up here in the third spot here comes brandon evans Brandon Evans in the 39, trying to go around the top side. Gardner sends it in hard. He's gonna slide up right in front of Evans. Evans has to get out of the gas. Here comes Pendleton. Pendleton trying to get up there as well. Literally a three horse race right now, but now Jake Ellings and Patrick Travick, they're having something to say about it as the top five start to close in. These are the top guns, of course. They're all battling it out for their championship hopes and they want to get it done and deliver and sign the seal and get it done. And hopefully we get some green flag races action all over the place. Of course, you can see uh, for the Veterans of Life Foundation here. Oh, and that's, oh no, that's Jake. That's Jake into, into the, uh, down into the inside apron. Lucky there's a bit of a runoff area. Should be able to get some traction back in there and get back into it. But it's going to cost him a ton of places. But hey, no damage on the car. A little bit of pride there. He will hopefully catch up to the, to the main group there. I'll show that track map there, Jacob. Yes, he will. But uh, yeah, there it is. So poor Jake and uh, Doug is unfortunately sitting at pet road uh, due to the fact that his shoulder is really bothering him. Hey, uh, health first, I always say. And, uh, you know, uh, sim racing and yes. hobbies second. There you go. Yes, yes, absolutely. I mean, obviously health first, like you said. And Jake, Jake didn't hit nothing. Uh, for the viewers out there, some of the Jake Allen, some fans out there, Jake didn't hit nothing. It was just uh, basically the back end stepped out. 27 ended up going around. He did not hit the inside wall. It's a good recovery right there for Jake Ellenson. And very, very fast. I mean, he's currently sitting back in the 12th spot. So he should be okay where he is sitting at, be able to try to drive back up here and maybe have a shot at Garner and Evans and Pendleton and Drabbing. But now we got a new guy sitting up there in that fifth spot. That's the 24 of Steve Tucker. And how about Jamie Barkas? We saw him the struggles he had he was way back there and around the 16th 17th spot out of the 20 car field he's worked his way back up to sixth he is under fire right now from another driver that had dropped back big time that being scott formosa both of them battling for the sixth spot as they go into turn three that's right that's why you never give up at this point 76 laps to go you're 40 down yeah of course anything can happen a couple of cautions a couple of spins a couple of wrecks and uh, Bob's your uncle. You're back into this one immediately. And this is the pressure at the moment. Scotty's putting on Jamie. Now, talk us through this one as a, as a racing driver there, Jacob. And, of course, your Monday nights is all full of commotion as well, too. But I think you had a pretty good Monday night, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, this time around, a lot of people didn't. Well, some people did. But it was so fantastic for the Monday night DSR Electric Series. But tonight, look at that. Riding on board with Scotty. He's up five. Jamie's battling his way up uh, through the field here. And... Uh, Explain it. See the bumps there. How's it feel to be the racing driver? Where are you going to get the overtake done? Well, I mean, you really want to try to see if you can get something going. A lot of guys, you'll probably start to see guys start to try to migrate to the top, like where you see Marcus actually starting to work his way up to the top side. But the top side is obviously where you're going to end up burning more tires up. And watch Formosa. Watch how much he's got that wheel. Folks, these next-gen cars, these... I mean, these guys, they've got a weird, or I guess steering, I guess you could say. There you see them uh, are getting a little bit loose off a of tube. But these guys, they got a weird steering deal. What they got, they get a steering pinion. They got a racket pinion, I believe that's what it's called, uh, for the steering in the car. So it's very, very uh, twitchy with these next-gen cars. And that's where you can easily see guys spin out like you saw Jake Ellison do just a couple of laps ago. Uh, so very, very twitchy coming off the corners here in these next-gen cars. And obviously, they don't have track bars um, with these next-gen cars. How everything has been changed on these cars over the past couple of years. As you see, Formosa get back in the gas. It's a little bit too much. Almost ended up getting into Barkas. He had to get out of the gas. Barkas got lucky right there. Formosa didn't get into him, but somebody did. We got a caution on the speedway. Oh, I was going to say, it wasn't. I was going to go George, Jewel, and Jake were back at it side by side again. Jake got the overtake, I believe, at the moment on uh, uh, 
So on somebody, sorry, on Joe Hobbs, but we'll have a look at that caution. I think it's Robert at the back here. Now, let's have a look at Robert. This is going to be a solo incident again, I think, there, Jacob. This is the bumps, isn't it? So he's on the gasoline. Look at the 57 machine. There it is. It got a little twirly whirly, got a little bit twitchy witchy, yeah, but he had the left off at the moment. Thankfully, there's only a few cars up behind him. Clever that he did. Slowed it down there, got back on the inside apron, no damage to the car, and just dropped a couple of places, but it did deem to cause a caution. Well, yeah, I mean, it does get a little bit bumpy uh, over in three and four. Usually where the bumps is really at, it's over in the middle of one and two. Uh, that's usually where it gets really, really bumpy. That's why everybody wants to try to, uh, I guess you could say, not necessarily ride the bottom of the track, but, but try to run uh, maybe one lane up. That's where it's about the smoothest. But four is where everybody usually spins as well as off of turn two. There you see Patrick Dravick. He's going to take a shot and go down pit road. I believe that is Drevic. No, that is no, Jason, Jason Taylor. Excuse Jewell me on well. that one. So Jason Taylor, George Jewell going down. A couple of others going in. There you see Eric Martinez going in. They're going to take him a quick pit stop. We're going to take a quick pit stop and let you hear from some of our sponsors. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. We're back here at Iowa here for the last race in the round of 12 for the Cruising Classics Next Gen Series with Goat Locker. And there you just saw Premier Racing Setups. Ironically enough, you got one, two up here with PRS. And folks, if you want to get the fastest setups, if you need a setup, go over to Premier Racing Setup.com or Premier Racing Setups. Got to throw that S in there. Obviously, they're not just one setup. They got a bunch of setups over there, a whole lot of them over there at PremierRacingSetups.com. Folks, if you want to get the fastest setups oh, on him. the service, obviously, <laughs> he's trying to push him. Getting a little bit fun right there between the two teammates. But if you want to get some of the fastest racing setups on the service, go check them out, PremierRacingSetups.com. Always remember that code, NASRA, N-A-S-R-A. You enter that code in, you're going to get 15% off your entire order also, that 15% will get kicked back to the North America Sim Racing Association. And also, if you want to race the setups at Jeremy Gardner, Brandon Evans, or hell, even the Redneck Announcer, go check them out. PremierRacingSetups.com. There is a G on the end of it, but obviously, uh, the Redneck Announcer, we don't believe in Gs. We just believe in INs. So that's how we do it. Pace car, lights is off. Gardner Evans up here. Gardner, he's pretty much he pretty much had a stranglehold on this baby. Um, the only difference really was Jason Taylor that ended up staying out with Scott Formosa. Uh, but Gardner's really been the the faster car, I guess you could say, throughout this race. He's really been the better car, I guess you could say, with Evans up there on the top side. Both of them, they've really took some shots. Evans took a shot at him earlier. We'll see if he can try to make it work. Obviously, Pendleton up here, Drabic up here, as well as Steve Tucker, Barkus. Formosa, Blake Edel, a new name up here, up 10 spots. Obviously, Jake Ellenson able to fight back from that earlier spin. And Joe Hobbs up here, 15th up to 10th. 
We'll see how this ends up working out. Pace lights, like I said, they are off. Pace car now starting to duck down. They're going to hit that green Geico flag, restart zone, and Gardner is standing on the gas, and he is gone, and he is away. Green flag in the air. Evans side by side with Ryan Pendleton. Pendleton on the bottom. Evans running the preferred line, not where it's bumpy. He's going to try to see if he can get the run off of two, but Pendleton's not going to let him have it. He's trying to get that second spot. He's going to race the hell out of Evans, and Gardner may end up getting away. That's exactly what I think they're going to do because they don't want to let Jeremy get away with this one because Jeremy's been getting away with it for so long. The man's put the car on pole, and he's going to just continue to dominate every one of these uh, breaks if we get cautions. Brandon Evans is hunting him down big time there. Ryan's lurking in the background. We have Patrick and Steve Tucker, and then Scott Formosa's doing a great job up, up six positions there for the AD machine. But look at this. Brandon Evans says, come on, Jeremy. Let's bring it, my friend. We're about halfway through the race. Let's go racing. Absolutely. You basically got the protege up at the front, and you got the builder right behind him. And obviously, you know Evans, he's in this whole deal for racing for points and trying to win a championship. Gardner, rather, is just kind of a, I guess you could say really in a one-off kind of deal. Uh, haven't really seen a whole lot of Jeremy Gardner this season. So right now, Evans may be racing for a little bit more than a championship right here. He wants to be able to try to beat his protege here tonight. He's brand new teammate with Premier Racing Setups. He's gonna see if he can try to get it done. And right now, basically, they are the class of the field. We actually got one driver way down on the bottom of the racetrack. I believe that was Steve Tucker. Tucker getting loose back yep, in three Tucker's and four, loose. almost lost the car. He's able to save it, but everybody going past Steve Tucker right now. Blake Edel went by him. George Joel now, he's gonna end up going by him as well. Brandon Barrier, the next driver to have a shot at Tucker. Looks like he's gonna be able to make a shot. Maybe, maybe not. Tucker gonna close the hole off. But up front, Evans and Gardner. Now Evans gets loose off a of four. Yeah, and also further back at the moment, we have two by two battles everywhere here. Absolutely everywhere. Look at this battle. As you said, Evans went uh, loose there. You got Patrick on the inside here. You got Scotty on the outside there. Jake's lurking in the background here. And then these are pack by pack by pack racing. This is fantastic. So Jeremy's got a huge, huge gap at the moment. Ryan's out hunting him down. Brandon Evans, of course, as you said, got Lucy Goosey. Scotty, Patrick, and Jamie. There it is. And then, of course, you get into this huge, huge battle. George Steele, don't worry about that one. He's still out there at the moment. Jake's back up there after having a little bit of a moment. As you go through the bumpy parts at the moment, it feels like you're going on a Panamanian road at the moment now, all about the outback of Australia. But the outside here, Scotty giving it a shot there on Brandon Evans, who was banging it out for the lead of this race, now holding on tight for P3. Yeah, he's really struggling down there on that bottom side. Obviously, Ooh. Evans, wow, slides up, loses the nose on the car. Almost ends up getting into Formosa. So Formosa's gonna end up going to the third spot. Now Evans, he's dropping back big time right now. He's got guys behind him looking to try to capitalize on Brandon Evans. And slipping is George Jewell down on the bottom. Blake Edel, one of the new names here with Goat Locker for the Cruising Classics Next Gen Series. He's got Brandon Barrier right behind him. Blake Edel. How about this? Like I said, he started back in the back, didn't qualify, started 18th. He's up here inside the top 10. Matter of fact, he is 10th. And Barrier riding on board with him. Going to take a shot down to the inside. Edel's going to be up on the top side. We'll see if Barrier can try to get the spot. No, he will not. Edel will get the run. He'll keep 10th for this lap. But we'll see if Barrier gets another shot at him. Looking back up front, Gardner is gone. Pendleton trying to run him down. Both of those guys, they've checked out for Formosa, and Evans, is in, and he is in a seriously tight battle back here with Patrick Dravick. Dravick has finally closed the gap on Evans. Dravick may end up smelling blood in the water right now wanting to go for this fourth spot. Every single time, every single time. Now, this is the other thing, too. There's a big battle, of course, still occurring here at the moment between these two drivers, so choreograph that one. George Jewell still leading a little bit up the road there. Now, we will tend to favor, and I do this, I, I do this because we are a network that, that is about entertainment, of course. And if you have your friends and family and girlfriends and wives and so forth in the chat, then we will try and try and try. And who is that? Martinez has gone off on the inside line. But we'll try our absolute best to bring the entertainment for the entertainers that are watching, people that are watching. So 
Now, I'm telling you, if you want the camera to spotlight your drivers a little bit more, we will try our absolute best. We won't take it away from all the action completely. But I tell you what, if you want a chance of getting that, you will get it. Jake, of course. So here it is. This is huge what's happening. Drivers are coming. You know either pit road or what's going on at the back here? Because Steve Tucker, Brandon Barrier, there's Blake. Oh, who's going super slow there? That's the 53 machine. That's Brandon Barrier. We might have to go yeah, up to the, to the top of that one. Sorry about that one, because Ryan's now finally starting to home in on Jeremy. It seems that everybody's, everybody that's, that, that comes close to Jeremy, my friend. Well, sorry, my apologies. Well, yeah, it does come close. But here it is. Scott is coming close. Big time. Ryan made a mistake. Out of the corner. Don't go on the outside apron there, my friend. Don't hit the fence. Might be in trouble. Brandon Evans hunting him back down again. Patrick just lurking in the background. Yeah, Evans trying to see if he can close back up. Obviously had that little bit of a slip earlier on. Now Formosa tried to hold on to third. You see right in front of him, Pendleton. Gardner, you don't even see him in the shot. We saw him for, right there for just a split second, but then he ends up uh, going away, I guess you could say. He is just chuck, chuck, chucking along right now. There you see this is the battle for second. Pendleton, Evans, or Formosa rather, Evans right there with Drabic back here. All these guys trying to see if they can run down Garner, but Garner is literally in his own area code. He's literally in a different state at this point. There you see Formosa trying to reel in Pendleton. Evans trying to see if he can gain back that lost ground. You got Dravic back here and also Jamie Farkas not too far back as well. But this is the big battle right here. This is for second. A lot of or a playoff implications, I guess you could say, can happen right here in this group from second all the way back to fifth. And that car up the road too. You got to remember, Jeremy's in the, this is nice position, but that's the orange car. Look at that other road there. He's got lap traffic up the road. So that lap traffic is either move out of the way or not. And look at that lift, big lift, huge lift. What happened to Scotty? I don't think he hit the fence. Caution. But we have a caution. It's Jake. Caution on the oh, speedway. Oh no, it's Jake. Look away there, Ray. You're gonna have to look away this one, Ray. It looks like Jake's had a little bit of a moment. I think that fence has come out there and tangled with uh, Jake. Oh no, what's happened to Jacob? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think it actually stepped out. I mean, he stepped out on him right here. This is the spot I was talking yeah, about where you can get a little bit loose. Uh, obviously, um, probably got on the brakes maybe a little bit too much. Back in kind of slides around and Jake Ellison ends up going for a spin. Jake really, really struggling here tonight, I guess you could say. I mean, he, you see him a bunch of times. We've seen him, Dean. He's drove through the field. And Patrick, and then look. he gets end up getting in this spot there. You see Patrick Dravic almost lose it. Hell, he ended up losing it anyway. He ends up going around. Yeah. We'll see if Dravic's able to get his stay, spots stay, stay. back. Yeah. We'll see how that ends up working out. But everybody's going down pit road. Going to get them some fresh tires right here. Why not? Exactly. They're going to take an opportunity on this one. Because you said it's all about tires. Not gasoline, but tires. So is it really going to make a difference if you're going to put gasoline in the car anyway when you're taking the tires? Or it doesn't really matter. You don't need it, do you? But you're best to keep your tank empty anyway, right? Or as light as possible, because that'll save you a little bit of pace. Well, yeah, I mean, uh, I mean, to be honest with you, I mean, that could be something that these drivers may be thinking about. Uh, not trying to take fuel. Uh, obviously, your car will be a lot faster. Um, but at the same time, with the less fuel that you'll have in the back, uh, you're actually going to get tighter as the race goes along if you do not end up making... Um, or filling it up full of fuel. Uh, at least that was the experience that I have had. Some other drivers have told me uh, that if they are, or if they don't end up putting fuel in the car, they end up getting looser. So oh. it, it's really, so it's really a thing. I guess you could say. I mean, it's just really a driver preference of how the car is going to feel for each and every one person. So we'll see how that plays out. Guys may just end up just going in there, topping it off, filling it up, making sure that the balance is not going to be off. Other drivers may end up wanting to go in there and not worry about putting fuel in the car. Rather, they do that, and then it can change the handling of the car, especially with the track conditions that we've been seeing so far here this evening. But, folks, we are under caution once again. There you see the nasties right there. Obviously, right there over the restaurant, they're going to be broadcasting that race uh, with Podium. Uh, for that race, April 27th, 2024. Obviously, big old breaking news right there in the middle of it. So we we'll have to end up, everybody go check that out. It's going to be an absolute blast. See how that works out. Obviously, everybody at that bar is going to be uh, 
Having a couple cold ones and maybe a burger or a hot dog, however you want to look at it. And there you see the car show right there for Saturday, June 22nd, 10 a.m., 2 p.m. up in Indy. Indianapolis, Indiana. Dean, we were just here. Yeah. We were just at yeah. Indy not too long ago. Matter of fact, I believe it was last week. Yes, it was. It was. Last week at the Brickyard. Uh, not real sure if it's going to be right down the road from it. Uh, there you see the address. If you want to be able to get into it, register right there is the QR code to be able to check out the car show with Lincoln Tech. All it's of not it at the same time Go as Parker. Indianapolis 500, I hope. And, of course, that's what's happening in this uh, round of, of the Next Gen series, of course, too, my friend, because after this, we go to the round of eight. Where do we go? Go to Homestead. One of my favorite tracks, honestly, on the schedule. Uh, Homestead, a very, very um, uh, place near and dear to my heart just because I absolutely love how that track is. The tire wear... Um, just the handling everything about it i mean it doesn't really matter if you're in an xfinity car next gen car or even a truck like we was in for the dsr electric truck series uh i've always had some very very good finishes with nazra at homestead uh had one last season um and done very very well in that and also this season dsr electric ended up getting second matter of fact my very first race i believe um it was the sim racer hub dot com truck series i believe it was uh last season i jumped in for one race matter of fact it was at homestead or two races rather homestead was the very first race i got second at that one and then this season i got second with the dsr electric truck series so still chasing that first win on monday nights um still chasing it after monday night but anyway that's beside the point pace lights is out Jason Taylor, George Jewell, Brandon Barrier. These guys did not make a pit stop right here, folks. Garner, yeah. Pendleton, Evans, Dravic back here with Formosa, Barkas, and Blake Edel. That is the top ten. Top three stayed out. They're on old tires. We'll see how this restart ends up playing out for Taylor. We saw it a while ago what happened to Taylor. He dropped back through the field very, very quickly. We'll see if he can hold on to that lead. Green flag is in the air party, waving that flag. And Taylor gets away. He's got a fantastic jump. A couple of guys back here. Three wide. Oh. Brandon Evans goes around. Barrier ends up getting into it, but no caution on the speedway. Brandon Evans is going to lose a hell of a lot of track position. As now we see Jeremy Gardner up here. He's taking a shot, and he's going to try to go for the lead on Taylor. Is there three wide coming off of four? Yeah, I was going to say, this is the big tire difference between these cars at the moment. You're going to see massive differences in pace and trust in your tires. The little four points of contact make a huge difference. George Jill slicing through the field at the moment, although he might be dropping back a little bit. He's got to do something about it. He's on old, old boots as well. Patrick's going to try to do something about that. You saw already, Jeremy's just dominating this one. He should be cool and calm and collective there. And like Talladega Nights, isn't it? He's like the, the French driver. He's sitting there sipping some uh, little uh, French coffee at the moment. I'm seeing a blinking driver as well, too. Oh, it just reappeared as well. I'm not oh, sure who that was. almost gets turned again. Yeah. Brandon Evans. Holy hell, he has almost got turned in the past three laps. I think the 12 car, Barrett Martinez ended up getting into him that time. So Brandon Evans really struggling back here. Not oh. necessarily with the handling of the car there. You see Barrier getting loose as well. But Evans not struggling with the handling of the car. He's just struggling with the field at this point. And Dean, we've seen what can happen on short tracks. We have seen that tempers can flare and we could end up seeing guys get moved out of the way or possibly even even end up getting dumped. This is classified as a short track, or at least in my opinion, it's a short track. It's less than a mile. So this is where you could end up seeing a lot of beef out here on the track. Evans may end up having some beef with Barrier and also with Martinez. Is there you see Pendleton trying to go around Jason Taylor. Taylor actually able to hold on right now to a podium spot as of right now on old tires. It's a good man for Jason Taylor, but all these other guys, they got freshies and they are coming for it. Not bad at all, not bad at all. I'd say with the boots that aren't made for walking too much around here. I was gonna say, we're almost at the Jake and, uh, and George Jewell show. Jake Ellison and George Jewell get side by side, but at the moment, this is where the action currently is. At the moment, you got way up into the fence there, 44. Yes, yeah, so I was going to say, that's Robert, I think. Again, Paul Robert. Well, no, no, Roberto. I saying Roberto's crashed, but Roberto's back in pit road unless he's got a toe. He might have got a toe there, Jacob. Might have got a toe. Yeah, I believe he yeah. did. 
Seven Barber left. ends up going around. He tries to save it and goes head on into the wall. All right. Coming off a of turn number two, there you'll see Joe Hobbs right behind him. And Joe Hobbs actually blinks out. I don't know yeah. if it actually scared Barber or what happened right there, but I think he may end up getting up there and some of that slick stuff. Uh, and then he ends up trying to stay off of Hobbs. And then Barber goes head on into the wall, and he has disconnected. So Robert yeah. Barber has disconnected. So that may end up, or, or excuse me, that may end up uh, ending his championship hopes he may not be able to make it into the round of eight after tonight. Folks, we're going to take a quick commercial break as we do see some guys going down pit row. We ain't got that many more laps to go. We're almost at the, at the end of it here at Iowa's Taylor and a couple other guys going down pit road. We'll be right back for the restart. Don't go anywhere. <laughs> Folks, we're back here at Iowa. A lot of crazy things has been going on. Shout out to every single one of you, 31 of you out there in the chat. Appreciate everything that y'all do. And uh, for some of the new viewers here with the Nazareth 360 Racing Network, if you have not already, go ahead and hit that like button. Hit the share button. Share it with all your buddies. And also go ahead and make sure that you subscribe to the Nazareth 360 racing network obviously nazra has uh, been moving up a lot out of the past couple of weeks a couple of weeks ago we just hit 500 subscribers so definitely everybody if you have not done it yet make sure you like share and subscribe this channel if you want to see some more of the honestly what is some of the best racing um literally all week because i mean monday tuesday wednesday thursday and friday that's what you get here at Nazra. You get all in. I mean, you get all end up types of racing. You get some Xfinity. You get some trucks. Get some next gen. Get some Marca. Hell, you get it all right here on the Nazra 360 Racing Network. There you see the schedule for the rest of this week. Obviously, DSR Electric Truck Series at Michigan. Um, hate to keep bringing it up because Jacob I didn't like how it finished. <laughs> yes, yes, didn't like how it finished, uh, but. Um, there you see Blanchard's towing. They are obviously the new sponsor for the Xfinity That's series. That's starting very guys soon, just too. Got done. Yeah. Yes. Yes, it is. Starting up in about a week or two. Yeah. So um, be able to try to get your plans right for that one. Those will be at 9 o'clock. DSR, Blanchard's, and Cops. They are at 9 when it comes to it. Goat Locker, all those will be at 8. And we're getting some chat out there wanting to give an idea of where the top 8 possibly would be. Right now, it's really up in the air, really. I mean, Dr I mean Dravic, Formosa, those guys, they look like they may be all right. Jake, he's got himself back up here in sixth as well. Evans, he's had a lot of wins this season, got a lot of bonus points going into the night. He's worked his way back up inside the top ten. So it's really all over the board, really, well, I'll tell you where what. everybody is at this point. But here we go. Green flag in the air. Gardner 
up on the front row. He ain't got Evans up here to help him now. Now wow. Ryan Pendleton up here on the top side. A lot of guys sending it going into turn one. Gardner able to make it stick and get the lead. Pendleton gets dropped back to second, driving back here to third. Formosa sliding up the track. He's still holding on to fourth, but look at this gaggle of cars back here with Evans back here trying to work his way back up through the field. He's got Tucker. Now he's going after Ellenson as they go into turn one. This is where it's at. This is where the hot zone is, of course, at the moment there because, I mean, good charge from Ryan because usually you see the race driver after a green flag restart just go, go for it two for nail and he's going up the road. But this time, Ryan put a massive challenge to him. And you don't see that very often. Ryan was like, uh-uh, you ain't getting away there, Mr. Jeremy Garner. As you said, like, yeah, Jeremy is essentially like the... Uh, the uh, the master, isn't he? And the apprentice is a try to chase him down. And so far, he's still been the master. Oh, Patrick, I think there. And Scotty going a little bit tight to out of that one. And uh, if you want to, here's Jacob on the inside there of Brandon Evans. Brandon Evans, the 39 machine. Jacob, the 27 there. There's Jamie in the back, or just up at the top of there. So it's going two for now. It's getting super heated and super excited. And uh, if you want to talk about the top championship drivers, well, the hot top championship. Oh, Braddon. He slapped the fence again, my friend. That's like the first time this evening he's done that there, Jacob. Yeah, but I think there may have been a little bit of contact. No, there wasn't actually. Yes, he slipped. He was trying to get a shot at fifth on, Jam on Jamie Barkas, but he just slipped just a little bit. Ends up costing him a little bit, so he's going to be back here trying to muster something up. But, Dean, even though he did get into the fence, his car is very, very aerodynamic. But if he would have been, say, a mile and a half like where we will be next week at Homestead, he would have probably been in a serious hole. But this being a short track, not necessarily that bad as far as aero goes. So a short track, you can, I mean, you can knock the fenders in nine ways to Sunday and still have a shot at it. And there you see Evans trying to muster it back up, trying to gather it, gain his, or regain, rather, his composure. He's up here battling for six right here with Jake Ellingson. He's got Barkas right in front of him. But a lot of people at, at that point, Dame, when Evans ends up getting loose right there, a lot of people would have probably just hit the gas too much and the back end would have stepped out and they wouldn't have been able to save it and put it up into the fence like he did as we actually got Blake Edel back here. I think Edel ends up going for a slide, I believe. It looks like he's able to get it back straight. A lot of guys getting loose off a of two and there you see Edel actually getting loose off a of four. He's gonna get bypassed by Tucker. He's gonna go, Joel's gonna go by. Evans now trying to work on J.B. Farkas. Evans trying to fight back through this field. Oh, slower car as well, too. He's going to navigate around that. Gets the tuck in behind. Evans is on a rampage, of course. Evans down a couple of places, and this is going to be close here, Jacob. There could be some door banging for you. Door banging oh. download. Three abreast, Jacob. 24 laps to go. Not quite. Yes, there's going to be three. Come on, gentlemen. Bring the action. There it is. One, two, three. There it is right there. Barely three wide for Mosa. Slipped a little bit and is going to lose a handful of spots. Lose them to Evans and Barkas. Now Formosa going to take a shot. Go to the top side. Try to ride some momentum. Not able to do it. Barkas is going to get away cleanly and, and hold on to that fifth spot, rather. Evans has slipped by. He's got himself up to fourth now. And Formosa really struggling back here. They, you, I mean, you see him literally every time they come off of the corner, the back end just wagging around like a dog's tail pretty much, just all over the place. Jake Ellenson back here comfortably in seventh. He's got Taylor right behind him. Taylor has really come on strong as of late, to be honest with you, Dean. He's kind of been an offset from some of these other guys, really, um, where guys may end up going in and Taylor may end up staying out, and then Taylor may end up going in, these guys stay out. Maybe that's exactly what I said, but he's flip-flopping is what he's doing from what everybody else is doing in the field. So Taylor got himself up to eight. Tucker and Joel, they round out the top 10. But the battle is on right now with Formosa and Barkas. And Formosa wants it, and Barkas ain't going to give it to him. And you have to also remember that Jason Taylor's got a little bit fresher boots. A little bit fresher boots. We're talking about just a tad here. But a tad makes all the difference, as you said, because he boxed back in lap 79. So did George Jewell, who's just lurking in the background. So... Come, when push comes to shove with 20 laps to go there, Jacob, that could be the huge difference 
As the uh, 12, is, is the machine just completely out of the way? Oh, he's going to lose it. Martinez ends Martinez. up going around caution oh. on the speedway. Ends up kind of looking, I mean, honestly, that looked out like of the way, maybe a, he? Yeah. yeah, but it looked like a self spin somewhat uh. right there by Martinez. It looked like it, but I think he was actually trying to get out of the way, like you said. Yeah. He, and then he ends up getting down to the apron. He but, was. I mean, yeah, but Dean, I mean, when you get in that situation of where he's at, uh, that's got to happen. There oh, you see there him. He's actually already sideways coming off a two. And then and I think it's when him. he ends up getting it straightened back up is when the leaders come around him. He tries to let him go, uh, but he literally straddles that yellow line uh, over yeah, at one and two, and usually that does not uh, work out all the time. There you see him coming off a three and four, uh, tries to work himself back up on the racetrack. Everybody else trying to go by him. There you see Evans. He ends up going by everybody else. There you see him, Barkas, Formosa, yeah. there's Ellenson, and you'll watch him right here just for a second. There he is straddling that yellow line, and then he just slips uh, just a little bit right there on that apron, ends up going around, and that triggers the caution. That's super unfair, really, at the end of the day, isn't it? Because nothing against Martinez. Martinez, I think, did a fantastic job, didn't it? Because he didn't want to get in involved in any of that. He did the right thing. He's like, hey, there's a battle going on. I don't want to get there. I'm still in. He's still in the race, of course, and he still wants to be in the race but at the same time he doesn't want to cause any problems to anybody it's just the way it is it's the way it's called isn't it so battle out of the pit road at the moment jason taylor stayed out george jewell stayed out i was about to mention that because they were the drivers that elected to uh had a little bit better tires it would have came into advantage for them both of those tires it would have came into advantage of them with under 20 to go now because that caution's called it's going to be perfect for the likes of Brandon Evans. Jeremy now. Brandon's actually beat Jeremy out of pit road. So Yeah, this is where it's going to get time, interesting. the Jeremy's not going to have a lead, essentially, in this race, Jacob. Yeah, I mean, more or less. I mean, you, I mean but, but, I mean, the both the PRS guys, they're going to have to be on that second row because Jason Taylor, George Jewell, you talked about it a second ago, both of them... Um, was offset from what the leaders was running as far yes. as tire wear goes. So they pitted or boxed, as you would say, uh, just a little bit later than the rest of those guys did. So I like this deal right here with Taylor and Jewel trying to stay out because they're not on as old tires, I guess you could say. I mean, you said that they boxed on, what, 79, yeah, I believe it was? Yeah, on the graphic was. right now, 79 exactly. So 79, yeah. so about 20 lap difference, give or take, right there, what you're looking at. You won't see uh, Evans, because Evans is boxed on lap. Those other drivers, they box on lap uh, 97 right now. That doesn't really show it too much, but that's the case. Right. Right, but still, but I mean, still, I kind of like this strategy right here with Taylor and Joel. Obviously, Joel uh, trying to do what he can, obviously, um, in the playoffs and trying to make sure that he can stay in those playoffs. And uh, from what the grid's showing, I mean, obviously, Taylor uh, not necessarily in the playoffs. He's just kind of out here just trying to uh, do what he can do to try to get a win, uh, to be able to, you know, self promote himself. Uh, here with the Cruising Classics Next Gen Series. Joel, he's in a different boat. He needs to try to get as many points as he possibly can. I think he was going to be good regardless of what happened tonight, but you want to try to throw something out there. You want to try to throw a curveball out there, try to do something different than what everybody else is doing, and that's exactly what George Joel is doing. But he's got Evans. He's got Gardner, two of the fastest drivers that we've seen here tonight, and obviously Pendleton and Dravic back there as well. This is going to be a hell of a finish all the way down to the line, Dean. Uh, I mean, literally, we could have sat here a minute ago. We could have sat here and picked, and I will get your idea on this, on you know who you think is probably going to win this right here. Uh, but there for a little bit, we was thinking, you know, what is Jeremy Garner's race? Now, not so much. Who you think is going to win it? Um, this is going to be interesting. I'm, I'm always a man on ties, right, regardless, because you took it about lap, uh, yeah, boxed on lap 79 versus boxed on lap 97. Everybody in the field from P3 down to essentially the rest of the field have got fresh boots. And I'm saying boots, of course, as tires. The top two, Jason Taylor and George Jewell. Now they're taking a gamble here, 15 to go, why not? Uh, yeah, my gamble is, I'd say Brandon Evans or Jeremy Gardner. I think if Brandon can hold off Jeremy Gardner, that's it. But uh, I don't think Jason Taylor and George Jewell are gonna hold on, but good on them. Get, I, if I was them, aim for a P3, uh, P4, get yourself at a podium at best. 
but against those two with the bloody top guns. Yeah, with fresher boots. Sorry. Even though Taylor and Jill might be quicker, it's tyres, my friend. Tyres coming to play, especially with 15. Well, I mean, I hate to be the biased one. I mean, obviously, I would pick a PRS guy, but if I had to pick a different one, I'm taking that 23 of Ryan Pendleton. But here we go. Green flag in the air. Jason Taylor, he's going to get a fantastic jump. Evans able to get by Joel. Here comes Pendleton. Gardner actually pinned back there. Three wide. Now it goes back to two wide. George Joel, now he's three wide. Drabic in the middle. Barkus down on the bottom. Now they go back to two wide. Formosa has to get out of the gas. Almost ends up getting into the back end of Joel. Joel almost spins. How about Pendleton? Oh. Ryan Pendleton hard into the wall. Right in front of George Joel. Ryan Pendleton in the 23. Head on into the wall. Coming off a of turn four. Caution on the speedway once again. That was huge. He must have. I mean, how did you lose it here with those fresh boots? Let's have a look exactly. Uh, it's cold tires, Dane. Yeah, that's cold tires. Exactly. Yeah. So what, let's go back up a little bit because I don't understand why. Yeah. So here it is. Everything's good. I don't think that's net code. It's everything's good. Right. I mean, looking currently at the moment, remember the 23 machine. And he's behind his teammate, essentially. Oh, they both wiggled. There it is. Yep. That's not net code, my friend. That is just cold tires. I think you're correct on that one. Yeah, I mean. Keeps uh, it, but they couldn't looking... keep it anymore. And then. Oh, oh. How did he avoid everybody almost? Not everybody. Bang. Gets tapped. George Jewell ends up yeah. getting into him a little bit. Loses oh. the front bumper. Hopefully, he's got a faster pair to be able to use. Yeah. But, Dean, it could have really went one or two ways right here. Because if we could actually get an overshot. Yeah, sure. Camera of Pendleton right here coming through three and four. Let's have a look. Uh, at the back it up, yeah, yeah. Back it up just a little bit. Get chopper. us, yeah, yeah, right. yeah, yeah. Back it up just a little bit. I'll kind of give Don't you worry. an idea right okay. here. Yeah, get the chopper rolling. Watch okay. Pendleton right here when he comes through three and four. You're gonna see obviously uh, Evans wiggles, and also Pendleton does too. But Pendleton, he's actually got a little bit more of a run. You'll see yeah. it right there. There yeah. goes Evans. Pendleton wiggles a little bit. I think he might have tapped the brake right there a little bit. Right. Maybe tried to dart out of the way thinking he was going to run Evans over. And I think that may have been what it caused it. So it could have been cold tires. How about Farkas? Holy hell. Uh -huh. How did J.B. Farkas get around that right there? He had his eyes closed. He was pulling a Matt Kenseth in the Daytona 500 with a big one. He more or less had his eyes closed hoping that he did not get into Pendleton. But, I mean, this could have really went one of two ways. It was either cold tires or he was trying to dodge Evans and that ended up just making him slip out of that or he hit the brakes, jammed on the brakes and ended up making the car go to the left. But I'm going to say it was cold tires, Dane. That's what I'm going to And that with. seems to me like that. And also, what well, is the number five machine that was near them too. We've got to remember this another element that comes into play because you got to remember he's racing here and he's got, uh, he's got his uh, announcer there. He's got his spotter saying, you know, number five is on the outside line. Now, there's your number five car on the outside line. I can't see a number five on the grid there. There's probably a telemetry not giving it correctly. But that'll give you a little bit of a throw off as well too. Because you might be thinking, okay, I got somebody there as well. And then, wow, how he was lucky not to take out even the likes there of uh, Jake and everybody else. Lucky, 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 I'd say for some drivers, not for all. But uh, there it is. So... Chances of Ryan winning this race now are getting very, very limited. But uh, there it is. This is going to buy Justin Taylor a little bit more time. And we all know what happened, unfortunately, to George Jewell. Uh, he dropped a lot of places to the start of that race. However, George Jewell's gone to pit road, and now he has the freshest tires in all of Iowa. Speedway, my friend. 104. Ah, he's got, he's got yeah. fresh boots. He's got the boots that are made for walking. He's in P12 which ain't going to be too far, nine to go. Jason Taylor's going to be in big, big trouble here. He's got old tires there, but somehow he held on before, Jacob. Yeah, I mean, they only really went one lap, so, I mean, the tires really shouldn't be in that bad spot. But it's like you said, uh, this caution, and obviously these caution laps are doing nothing but helping Jason Taylor right now in that 44, because obviously everybody else got the fresh boots, like you said. He's got to try to figure out how to hold all these guys off. And obviously, Evans, very, very strong. Got his teammate right behind him, as well as Patrick Drabbit back there with Jamie and Jake. But Taylor wants as many caution laps as he can get. Um, 
at least if I was Jason Taylor, that's what I would be thinking right now. He's got this strategy, and he's pretty much made his bed. He's just going to have to lay in at this point and hope everything falls his way, maybe get a podium, may end up yeah. winning it. Because we already saw what happened to Pendleton. And Pendleton, a very, very skilled driver here in Goat Locker, really knows uh, what he is doing and knows how to get up front, knows how to get a win. Uh, so we'll see how that ends up working out. Because like I said, Pendleton, all that they do, actually Jason Taylor, he's going to take the top side right here on this restart. Ooh. So we'll see how this ends up working out for him, especially going into one. We've already seen a lot of guys lock them up, hit the bumps, back in, come around. But back to that point it's like i was talking about pendleton being very very skillful brandon evans is very skillful i mean the resume speaks for itself jeremy garner resume speaks for itself i mean the man won the jam printing and promotions truck series last season so that speaks for itself patrick drabic obviously um his resume i mean owning goat locker so any of these guys could end up running into the same problem that ryan pendleton just ran into uh, sped it out, and it ended up green, green, basically green. ending their nights. We'll see how it works out. Jason Taylor gets the green flag. It's a pretty good start. Evans right back there as well, side by side. Drabic, Gardner. Gardner's going to send it. He's going to go to third. Has to get out of the no. gas. Almost gets into Evans. He did. He got into the back of Evans. Jason Taylor, this is what he needed. Taylor is gone, yeah, got and now SJ. Jake's going to go around. Travick oh. goes into it. Formosa, Edel, literally a pileup going into turn four. Caution on the speedway once again. And, Dean, this may run into green-white checkers. This may. This is exactly what I was going to say. I was gonna, If more than anything, Jason Taylor needed, basically, to on the radio to say somebody's throwing a beer can over on the track at the moment and we need to get another caution on the, on, on the, on the speedway. And he did. He got it. But he got it in the fact that the, that the battle there back with Jake. Now, let's have a look specifically and find out what happened with that one. So you can see the 2739. Now, what do you think about that one? That's, that's close. That's close. Well, well, well I mean... The chopper cam, right? Because the old chopper cam never lies, does it? Let's go. Well, I... <sighs> I mean, I want to go back and look at it on my end right here. Obviously, All Gardner right. uh, Gardner gets into Evan, slides him up the track. Tucker was hauling the mail on the top yeah, side. Yeah. And I, I know Miss Allison is going to be a little bit bad at me <laughs> you know, when I make this call right here. But you'll see Jake when he sends it in right here. There's Evans on the top. Gardner, he's going to get by Evans. Dravic down there trying to force Ellison down. Ellison ends up going around him. But watch what happens when Jake goes in here. Jake straight up sends it going into three. And Evans, run the middle, comes down. But Ellenson, watch how far he goes up the racetrack. Yeah, he's going up the racetrack. Evans really didn't move. So Ellenson sent it in there. Ended up losing the nose, slid up into Evans. Obviously, Ellenson goes around. Dravic gets involved. Formosa, there you see Edel. Joe Hobbs able to dive low and be able to get around it. A couple of other drivers able to dive low and get True. around it. Yeah. So, unfortunate right here for Jake Ellenson. Um, not what he wanted to see, but uh, like I said, I know I'm probably going to get some beef out there in the live chat <laughs> about the whole deal right there, but... It looked like to me, I mean, you know, Dean, you know as well as I do, you know, we call it like we see it. I got to call it like I see it at that point. And then I think Jake just sent it in there a little bit too hard. Evans held his ground. Jake gets into him, and he ends up going around. Well, I'll tell you what right now, really quickly, while we have a minute and change, the Cruising Classics, you well, you caught that one last week. Somebody actually caught that car. Let's have a look and see if anybody pays attention to what is the... Uh, they're not on the... Uh, yeah, the, the lights are still on. They're not on a Cruising Classic course, brings this one on, Jacob. What is the last car that's going to be shown in our Cruising Classics ad? Pay attention, everybody.
Folks, we're back here with the Cruising Classics Next Gen Series. These guys, uh, right now, they are not within the lines of a green-white checker just yet, but I think they will end up coming back to the line, and it will be a green-white checkered finish right here. And Jason Taylor may end up walking away with this bad boy. We'll see how it works out for him. He's going to take the top side. Any of you out there in the chat know what that last car was that we showed? It was red. Um, go ahead, throw it out there in the live chat. It was a red car. So any of you out there in the live chat know what that car was? Go ahead and key it up. Let us know what you think. And um, if you it's didn't see it, well, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, it wasn't a Ferrari. But uh, go ahead, throw them out there in the live chat. Let us know what you think. And uh, we'll probably play it once again after the race is over with. So some of you viewers that maybe missed it, go ahead and get your guesses in on that one. But here we go. Jason Taylor on the off strategy from Gardner and Evans and Tucker, Barkus, Dravik up here on the older boots than the rest of the field. He's going to take the top side. Gardner down on the bottom. Pace green, cars green. off. First attempt at a green white checkered. And Taylor is gone. Jason Taylor gasses it up. He's going to drop down to the bottom, side by side for second. Steve Tucker, Jeremy Gardner. Now Gardner tries to slide up the hill. Tucker able to get there. And now Gardner right in behind Jason Taylor. Taylor tries to send it. He sends it too hard. Jason Taylor up the racetrack. Jeremy Gardner comes down to the inside of the oh. racetrack. White flag is in the air. Jeremy Gardner, he is clear. All clear, Jason Taylor is going to end up probably holding on to the second spot. Oh. Tucker gets loose. Evans gets into him. Traffic may end up getting third, but Taylor on the top side tries to get a run. He's not able to do it. Your winner here at Iowa, Jeremy Gardner in the 69-5 car. Jeremy Gardner gets the win. Jason Taylor will get second. And how about this? Blake Edel in the 18 from 18th up to third. Jeremy Bark or Jamie Barkus rather, and Brandon Evans. That is your top five. What a finish here at Iowa. Yeah, well, Jeremy didn't want to lose anything on this one, did he? Not anything at all. The man has dominated this race and has proven he's dominated again. And uh, guess what? Maybe those premier setups make a big, big difference there, Jacob. Because look at that. Jeremy is just burning it down. That. Look at that. That's control, my friend. That is domination. Jason Taylor held off brilliantly. I'd have to say, in those tires of the dying stages, he was lucky those cautions came out for him. But look at that. That, my friend, is how you uh, get the job done. Jeremy Taylor takes the win. Jeremy Gardner ends oh, up Gardner, getting sorry. the win. Oh, oh. Just somebody... <laughs> yep, there you got it, my friend. Absolutely. The protege uh, outdoes the builder here tonight at Iowa. There you see the results. Jeremy Gardner, Jason Taylor, great drive by Jason Taylor to throw that strategy out there. And he, I mean, if Gardner would have slipped, Taylor would have had this sucker in the bag. Uh, so don't think Jeremy Gardner got this one give to him right here. Taylor was there, and Taylor, he could have had this sucker, but he's going to end up settling for second. Blake Edel ends up getting third. We'll talk to those drivers here in just a little bit. There you see the rest of the running order. Jamie Barkus, Brandon Evans, that's your top five, with Steve Tucker, Joe Hobbs, George Jewell able to fight back from the spin, or from the spin when Ryan Pendleton went head on into the wall. He's able to fight back and get an eighth place finish. Patrick Drabick will get night. Jake Ellenson, probably a night that he may want to forget with some of the spins that he's had here this evening, but still able to get a solid top 10 here tonight. Scott Formosa will get 11th. Brandon Barrier will get 12th. Eric Martinez, 13th. Bobby Germain, 14th. He's the first driver uh, to finish laps down. So he will end up finishing 14th, one lap down. Ryan Pendleton We'll end up finishing 15th. Robert Barber will finish 16th. Chris Sawyer will get 17th. Alan Marshall, 18th. Dougie, Doug Ellison will get 19th. And Tyler Justice will finish in the 20th position. Folks, we're going to take a one more, one more commercial break. Folks, check out the ad for Cruising Classics. Let us know what that last car was. It was a red one. 
uh, or so Dean says, it was a red one. I was looking at the gray one, so we may all end up having to look at it one more time. Uh, but, folks, we're going to throw these commercials at you one more time. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back with your podium finishers. Folks, we're back here at Iowa, the cornfields of Iowa for the NRE, our post-race interviews. We'll go ahead and bring up your winner here this evening. We'll get back to that uh, car here in just a little bit. We'll go ahead and bring up the winner. Got him in here, and that is Jeremy Gardner got the win here tonight, the 69 slash 5, however you want to end up looking at it. But Jeremy Fantastic finish. Great race. Tell us about your night, buddy. Uh, it was definitely fun. I didn't think I was even going to be that competitive. Uh, that's a loose track, and I'm really bad for throttling up, so I figured I would at least uh, spin out from the lead. But I tried to play it smart and try to be smooth all night. Uh, that was that was really fun, man. Car rotated perfect all night. Just tried to save my tires. I didn't know if it was going to be a caution fest or not. Just like I said, it was loose. But overall, great night. I'm uh, pretty stoked. I hadn't won in a while. I've been in a major slump, but that's definitely a monkey off my back right there. Yeah, it absolutely has me, Jeremy. We haven't really seen you a whole lot, uh, at least for the Wednesday night series. We haven't seen you a whole lot uh, here with the Cruising Classes Next Gen Series this season. But, I mean, it's got to be awesome to come back out here to Goat Locker Get you a win. Uh, obviously, last season with the Jam Printing and Promotions Truck Series champion, uh, obviously, Brandon Evans was in that championship battle with you, and now both of you are teammates now with Premier Races setups. But, I mean, obviously, I mean, it's like you said, get the monkey off your back uh, to be able to come back out here at Goat Locker and, um, and be able to put down some laps and get you a win. Obviously, it's got to be big. Yeah, man, for sure. Uh, apologies to Brandon. Also, he is my teammate, but apologies to him. I didn't mean to drive it out like that on two uh, and bump him up and almost wreck him. But, you know, a couple laps to go, I guess you really got to do what you got to do and that adrenaline gets to you. But overall, great finish. Ah, uh, hell, he'll live. Nah, I'm just kidding. Yeah, he will. <laughs> I'm just kidding on right. that one. But, Jeremy, congratulations on the win. And before we let you go, uh, or Dean, have you got anything from Mr. Gardner? No, I was, I was about. So I just watched Talladega Light Nights. So I thought he was like your teammate that says, "Hey, can I win every once in a while, Jeremy?" But anyway, it's fine <laughs> if you're Bobby. Jeremy, no, good job, my friend. You dominated this race. Uh, Appreciate it, man. Start to end. Uh, yeah, hey, you like he's, been, he's been beating me lately, so you know I had to return the favor and finally get me one. So. All right, there you go. But yeah, uh, he, ain't, he ain't lying on that one. But Jeremy, <laughs> before we let you go, buddy, have you got anybody that you want to thank that made the win possible tonight? Yeah, absolutely, man. GLR, Pat and Jamie do a great job with this league. Love this league. The only league I really want to run in. Uh, Cruising Classics, Jam Printing Promotions, Veterans for Life Foundation, Right Now Roofing, Redbeard Design Company. Of course, y'all guys, y'all do a great broadcast, and I appreciate the hell out of y'all. And definitely Premier Setups. I was facing the same. Make sure you get the PRS in there. Jeremy Gardner. 
Obviously, the new sponsor on there, Premier Racing Setups, number five slash 69, gets the win here tonight. Jeremy, appreciate your time. Congratulations on the win, and uh, hopefully we'll see you back around here in Goat Locker uh, in the near future. I appreciate it, guys. Y'all see me around. That was Jeremy Gardner, obviously. Uh, been a good or, or a good while, I guess you could say, for some of the viewers out there on the National 360 Racing Network and within Goat Locker. Been a while me and Jeremy Gardner has had a chance to talk um, as far as me broadcasting and him racing, so it was awesome to get that over, or to get that conversation. Um, may end up getting with Gardner, may end up having him on the door banging download here pretty soon, so that may end up being a very, very interesting uh conversation with mr gardner let's go ahead and bring up the man that yeah. basically threw some crazy crazy strategy out here and able to get the second place finish that is mr jason taylor in the number 44 jason taylor congratulations on that second place finish tell us about your race buddy oh just working them jedi mind tricks that's all <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, why didn't so, you? Uh, why didn't you actually call it Order Sixty Six, my friend? <laughs> so, so, oh no, no, no! no we don't oh, that's a Sith. Yet. That's a Sith thing. Yeah. Execute no, Order Forty Four. Go ahead, my friend. Yeah, there you go. There you go. <laughs> uh, so uh, the idea was, I had top five speed. I felt like for sure, uh, but I really wanted to come out here and get a win. So I kind of threw myself off of the tire strategy. And I wanted to get into this area where I had I had really good tires if like we got like ten or fifteen laps on them and everybody else went into pit. So that just ended up working out for those last thirty laps and uh we got a lot of a lot of flags saving me. Yeah, we was talking about that a lot, obviously. Uh, a lot of cautions right there at the end really saved you. Um but I mean Obviously, you're not in the playoffs, obviously not up there um, racing, you know, with Evans and Tucker and all those guys trying to go for points. So you really could afford to do this strategy and it not necessarily cost you uh, because you're not worried about points necessarily. But I mean, it, it's got to make you feel good going up there and being able to do that and not have that added pressure, I guess you could say. Uh, to be able to go ahead and throw it on the wall and see if it sticks. <laughs> no, I kind of, I kind of thrive on that kind of pressure. So I'm a little, a little disappointed I got here late, but uh, it is, it is what it is. Next season's next season, right? It'll come around. And uh, I just want to kind of establish myself in the league. Let, let everybody know I'm a good, clean driver, but I'm, I'm still pretty quick. So that's, that's what I'm out here trying to do. And I think I've done that tonight. Yeah, I'm very, very unpredictable, I guess, if you want to put it that way. Well, Jason Taylor obviously got that second place finish tonight. Jason, before we let you go, you got anybody that you want to thank? Sponsors, shout outs for making this possible. Uh, sure. Um, a bunch of OGs. Oh, I just closed it. Um, well, I don't really have any sponsors, but this league is sponsored very well, and I just closed it, and I had the things, and I was going to say the thing. We have it up in your car and at the I, moment. Do we, we, can tell, we can actually show you on the, oh, on the car my, if you like. My, my car says untied retinals. Yes. It's just a shout-out to my dyslexia. That's oh, all. That's fine. That's <laughs> something else, my friend. <laughs> and I'm a big uh, Ryan Priest fan, so I just took and <laughs> it. Is what it is. Absolutely. Praise Priestess. And so this is actually going to be good for you because, you know, even though this is not something for the championship hunt this season, but uh, do you think that everybody's going to be fearing you, Jason, in, in the next season? Jason, uh, sorry. Yeah. Um, when, you, when you're into there, like the fear the man from San Antonio? 44 <laughs> machine? I don't really want anybody to fear me per se, but I, I, w I would like people to know that they're going to get a really hard, good race from me and uh, hopefully be excited that that's going to happen. Get this man a sponsor. Any mm -hmm. of you out there here listening to this on the Nazareth 360 Racing Network, the Jedi from San Antonio, Jason Taylor, appreciate your time. Congratulations on that second place finish. And uh, I've got a feeling this man's going to end up getting him a win here pretty soon with the Cruising Classics Next Gen Series. Jason, appreciate your time, buddy. Thank you, boys. Thank you for the broadcast. I can't wait to watch it later. That was Jason Taylor, obviously. Uh, caught it right there at the corner. I saw the Jedi down there. I'm not real sure if uh, 
he uh, he had the force working with him here tonight. Uh, probably did. And uh, sometimes the force is good to you. Sometimes the force is bad to you. And any Star Wars fans that's out there saying you have no idea what you're talking about, you're probably right because I haven't really watched a whole lot of Star say, Wars. He's not a but Jedi we know about yet. the force. But he's not a Jedi yet. But I think he is a Jedi right now, my friend. He's, he's just uh, proven, isn't he? He's a master he's, uh, Jedi. What you call it? Well, oh, well, I was going to go with a Padawan. Uh, no, so yeah, I know no. a little bit about Star Wars, hell, folks. Jacob. Come Get on, the man. Program, Help me out okay. here a little he's bit. Now, he's now promoted to the League of Jedis or whatever. But who's next to be promoted, of course, <laughs> to, the, to the commentary booth? <laughs> we'll see if we can bring him over here to the round table, I guess you could say. Uh, bring in third place, Mr. Blake Edel. I believe I'm pronouncing that right. Am I pronouncing that right, Blake? Yeah, it's pretty close. It's Edel. E. Oh. Dale. All right. Well, we're going to have to get this name uh, 100% etched in our minds. How about it? 18th up to third, Blake. Tell us about your night because obviously you had to pass a hell of a lot of cars to be able to get up there and get that third spot. Yeah. I mean, coming into the night, uh, my expectations were pretty low. I really, uh, this is a pretty tough car track combo. So I really just wanted to uh, not be uh, the reason everybody was, was wadding their stuff up. So, you know, I, I was pretty early on. I was I was real steady. Uh, first time I changed my tires, I think I was like 98, 97 or something like that. So I was really just trying to take care of the car, keep it underneath me. And uh, early on, just took advantage of a couple of cars getting loose and then getting up into the wall and uh, was able over the night to kind of find some speed. I struggled in one and two most of the night. I was, I was having a really hard time with uh, brake balance getting in there um, with any speed. So... I would kind of work my way up to the top in three or four to try to make up that speed later on in the runs. And, uh, you know, I was able to gain some spots that way too. But, yeah, you know, I don't know if I was a fast enough car to be be a third-place car. I was probably more like a sixth or seventh-place car. But, you know, we were able to get, get by a couple there at the end that were racing pretty hard. Blake, I'll throw one quick question yeah. into you, my friend, there for your Lucas Oil 18 machine there. Uh, one thing you did gain was 15 places. You gained more places than any other driver on the grid. Right? Uh, plus 18 would have been good. That would have uh, essentially almost got you the race win. But, hey, I'll take a P3 any day of the week there, Blake. What a job, my friend. That little uh, commotion towards the end. Doesn't matter. That went up the road from you. All you need to do was drive that car to the end, and you drove that car to the end well. Biggest gain and the, and the biggest finish. Uh, you get to taste the bubbly stuff on the podium. Must feel good. Yeah, yeah. Like I said, uh, I, I didn't, I didn't expect, especially late in the run there, I wasn't expecting to be able to get into the top three. I didn't think I quite had the speed, um, but I was finding more and more speed the later the run went. Uh, I didn't have a lot of laps with this setup, so uh, I was just kind of figuring it out as I as I went. But yeah, you know, uh, keeping it, <laughs> keeping it out of the trouble at the end, I was able to sneak in there for a third place. So yeah, I'm pretty happy with it. And you know. <laughs> Dean actually just kind of, I guess he kind of hinted on the second question I was going to ask you right there, because obviously you were going into the, literally the last lap and you were sitting in, give or take seventh. And then all of a sudden, literally all hell ended up just breaking loose, coming off a of turn forward. You went from seventh to third and I don't even know how many feet that would be, give or take all the way from four to first. Uh, you can tell us if you want to. Was your eyes closed when that happened? <laughs> Might as well be. Yeah, I, so <laughs> I, I wanted to run that that high line up there, and uh, I saw I saw somebody get a little bit loose, and the car behind him was real close. So I kind of lost sight of the loose car. So I lifted just a hair, but I started pointing my car down the track, and as they slid up, I was able. to with the throttle just to work it down to the bottom but there was also a car down there so as i was coming as i was splitting the gap between all of those cars yeah i might as well have been eyes closed just hoping all right blake well we're gonna do this to you right now my friend because we don't do it very often really quickly i've been sorry jacob no you have to pack and stuff like that but if you can <laughs> if you can look at the cameras that i'm showing you right now that's live and to actually be broadcasted live uh, I'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna rewind this. I'm on board with you right now, so you can show us and you can talk us through this because I want people to understand what does a driver reaction do. Can you get, can you see this right now, Blake? So you yes. can talk us through this. All right, now talk us through this. This is quarter speed. Remember, everybody, quarter speed. Blake is doing this at a hundred speed, two hundred miles an hour. But talk us through this, my friend. 
Yeah, so like I said, I want to run this high line. I see them get a little bit loose there, so I kind of lift, and I'm pointing my car down the track there. I see and uh, as they start to slide up to the wall, I'm just full throttle, uh, just hoping and praying nobody slides down there to me before I can get through there. Um, I was waiting uh, to see if they were going to work their way down the track or up the track, because like I said, when I saw the, the car get loose, I lost track of, of the loose car. So I didn't know if he was going to spin him down the track or if they were going to go up towards the wall. So I pointed my nose down just a hair. And right. when I saw him go up, I just full throttled it, got down to the yellow line and uh, was just holding on, hoping I could get through there before they came. And now we're going to do this really quickly, my friend, at full speed to give everybody a split second for you to even make that decision in your <laughs> head. So let's have a look. Full speed. Yeah, you'll see me point the car a little bit down the track there. I'm pointing it there. They slide up. Wow. Oh, that wow. That is pretty impressive, yeah. my friend. I'm sorry to Perfect say that. Perfect time to get loose yeah. right there. I will say that right there. But, wow. Blake, congratulations on the third place finish, buddy. And before we let you go, you got any sponsored shout outs for making it possible here tonight? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we got to thank Cruising Classics, uh, Jam Printing and Promotions, the, the Veterans for Life Foundation, uh, Right Now Roofing, uh, Red Beard Designs and uh, NASR 360 for putting on a cool broadcast for us, man. I appreciate you guys. Absolutely. We appreciate y'all. Blake, uh, Edel, uh, am I saying it right? <laughs> I'm sorry. Edel. Edel, Edel. Write that one down, Dean, and make sure I don't screw it up next week. Blake, <laughs> Edel ends up getting third here tonight. Appreciate your time. Congratulations, buddy. Thank you, guys. That oh, was what Blake a night. Edel. Yeah. We'll put it to yeah. you like that. And real quick, real quick, before I get your final thoughts, Dean, we got some points. We do, we do, we do. We have standings. some points. We have no, no. Oh, we have no. some official points. Oh, right. We have official points. Jake Ellison just sent me the round of eight. Okay, so I know talk a lot us of through you this. I'm going to show the graphic up are... there, but talk us through this. This would be fantastic. Okay, so. Um, Real quick, by the way, Tyler Justice, you were right. C2 Corvette, congratulations. Um, yeah, congratulations, buddy. Attaboy. All right, so Brandon Evans, he's going. He's in a round eight. He's uh, going. Take Steve that, Tucker. Brandon Evans, yep. Steve Tucker, he is going. Take the All right. Stevie. All right. Patrick Drabick. Go ahead and slide Donner on over there to round of eight. He will go. All right, zero seven's in. All right, that's three. Jamie Barkus. Think Jamie Barkus after the slip that he had earlier on the night, it almost ended up completely losing it. He ends up getting a fourth place that's finish four. after the chaos that happened off three and four. Jamie Barkus. Right. He will go. He finished fourth that just, in this last yes. race. Yeah, so he's full. All yes. Right. The man that just sent me this. Now we have four left, Jacob. Four slots Mr. out of 12. The man that just sent me the official points, Mr. Jake Ellingson. Slide him over to the round of eight. Jake, he gets five. All right. Scott Formosa. Scotty. Even though he did not have the night that he wanted. Finish he's in finishing 11th. Right. Or uh, 11th, matter of fact. He finished 11th. Slide Scott Formosa on over there just a little bit. So we're down at two Joe, left. Joe Hobbs in the number okay. two. Take Joe Hobbs. Able to get a fantastic finish tonight. End up finishing seventh. Joe Hobbs. Slide him over to the round eight and drum roll. And the last one, your, Jacob. Your final driver to make the round of eight. Miss Shasta's mad. George Jewell. Oh, George Jewell gets in going to the hair. round of eight. Wow. That is your round of eight, folks. Brandon Evans, Steve Tucker, Patrick Drabick, Jamie Barkis, Jake Ellenson, Scott Formosa, Joe Hobbs, and George Jewell will be going to Homestead in the round of eight. There you see the schedule. Next round is going to be an absolute blast. Homestead, Richmond, then obviously championship four at phoenix in my personal opinion i think phoenix and homestead need to be swapped but that's just my opinion just put, we'll yeah. save that one <laughs> we'll save that one for the door banging download anyway dean yes Jacob. your take on the short track race here tonight in the cornfields of iowa well it seems really fun thank you very much for jacob stepping in i know that uh, wasn't absolutely scheduled at the moment you're packing for your vacation at the moment my friend 
So you should get on your way to cruising your classic vacation that you well deserved. So we'll get that sorted out for you, my friend. But of course, the fantastic work that everybody puts on this lead there, Patrick, and and so forth. I'm going to be looking forward to that this one because we're getting down, of course, to the round of eight, as you'd mentioned there. So the eight top guns are going to be battling it out there. Who knows? You've got drivers that are in there, like Jason Taylor and so forth, that aren't in the absolute mix here that will be in the future. But overall, it's been, it's been great. I mean, a couple of cautions. So what? It's what it is. Jam those... Uh, uh, the jam the actual jam printing and promotions uh code on your phone as well too and don't forget about the two advertising you got nasties as well to remember that's breaking news we showed that earlier as well and don't forget about the well as the car show jacob because there's two of those things we'll show that as we get into the rest of the season and of course the season that we showed for the, for the calendar that will be for the rest of this one but for the rest of the week there jacob well guess what arca tomorrow night you can wrap it all up for us absolutely gonna have arca up there in the bluegrass state like i said get some bourbon up there uh, maybe a little bit of moonshine up there in the mountains up there in kentucky and then obviously we're gonna go from a buzz all the way to japan for the twin ring motegi gonna be rocking and rolling up there at twin ring motegi for the star base comics 50 1552 200 that's a lot of miles no i'm just joking the 1552 has not got anything to do with the miles folks it's with the sponsorship it's going to be 200 and that's also a dash for cash race with the concerns of police survivors truck series and then going all the way into next week monday round of 10 or the elite 10 rather We'll be at Old Atlanta, 9 p.m. Eastern Time for the DSR Electric Truck Series. All of this is going to be on the Nazareth 360 Racing Network, folks. It's been an absolute blast here in the cornfields of Iowa. We've had a great time watching a lot of great short track racing. Uh, may end up seeing a little bit of bumping and banging. Maybe there was a little bit of beef out there on the racetrack, um, which is usually what happens on a short track, but obviously want to thank all the sponsors, obviously Veterans for Life, Jam Printing Promotions right now, Roofing, uh, Cruising Classics, the sponsor for the Cruising Classics Next Gen Series, obviously NRE Power for being the sponsor for the for the, um, for the post-race interviews, obviously with Blanchard's coming on with the Xfinity Series, DSR Electric, um, Cops, all the sponsors, and obviously the Nazareth 360 Racing Network, uh, Brady LaBeouf, uh, Cody Knott, uh, all the guys within you know the Nazareth 360 Racing Network, Wesley Outland, Robert Hill Jr., my colleagues, uh, Tyler Detmer that stands in on Monday nights. Um, just so many, so many people to thank that are able to put this on uh, five nights a week for you, the fans. And shout out to you, the fans, every single night, every single week, you guys come out and y'all are in numbers every single week to support your family, your friends, your work colleagues, however you want to look at it. And shout out to the drivers, the ones that put on the show, to be honest with you, Dean, because they are the stars each and every week. We just call what we see on the racetrack. And shout out to those eight drivers that we just called out a while ago. Shout out to those eight drivers. Congratulations to them. They will be still racing for a championship for the Australian Dean Biggles, Dean Hopton. We'll get it figured out one day, Dean. I am the redneck announcer, Jake Reeves. Say it as I always say, be safe, be kind, be fast. We'll see you next week. We're going down south, way down south in Miami, Homestead. We'll catch you then.